Colonel Margolian. I'm a Western Michigan graduate of uh, June 2022, majored in aviation flight, aviation management, and a minor in general business. And this is gonna be talking about my Cab My Air experience up in Alaska. So day one, was just the travel day going to the airport. I'm local from Chicago, so I was home to the era. Drove to O'Hare, flew on Delta to Minneapolis, then caught my connection flight to Minneapolis to Anchorage. Got there at around four or five o'clock p.m. Um, Alaskan time. There's around three, four hour time change difference um, from the areas over here. And when I got there, I met the WMU alumni, Chris Desmond. He picked me up. We went over to watch the nice sunset because um, by the time I went, in May and June, the sun sets around over 1 a.m. It doesn't truly get dark around until 2 or 3 a.m. So that was definitely a cool change for me to experience that because this was also my first time in Alaska. Good morning, y'all. It's Tuesday here up in Anchorage, our first day of the internship. But uh, took a little morning stroll because I just couldn't get over the uh, the amount of sunlight. So we're taking a stroll around Lake Hood here, the world's largest seaplane base. Some amazing views in the background. Today's the first day, uh, like I said, of the internship. So we're gonna meet uh, meet some WMU alum while we're at it. We had ground school. That's kind of where I met all the seasonal pilots for the seaplane operations, operating to and from the lodges, and just going over certain things such as, the biggest thing is safety. Talking about how certain float planes sit lower and higher in the water and where is it safe to take those float planes based on the river height and let's say there's a sandbar somewhere, we're like, hey, we cannot land here, we need to go somewhere else for the time being. Um, so that was really cool to kind of like take a different approach to so-called pre-flighting um, that we do here for normal flight training operations and just local flights like that. It's, it's definitely a different way to pre-flight using your resources, Google Earth. And there's also the FAA has cameras, weather station cameras, because the weather stations in Alaska might be reporting one thing, but when you go look at the live camera footage for wherever the camera is at, it can be a 180 degree difference in regards to the weather. So that's a really cool aspect that I learned about pre-flighting in Alaska for sure during ground school. There's so many more dangerous situations you you can get yourself into Alaska and learning about those was very interesting and how I can apply that toward my future flying career. Day three um, is when I had my first day truly flying in the airplane. Cat My Air has a Pilatus PC-12. So on this day, we flew to Kakanok, which is a small gravel strip. We went from Anchorage to there. And it's so interesting, you go there, you land on this gravel strip, but it's definitely such a unique experience to do those off airport landings. I, you know, those were one of the coolest things that I have a passion for, especially in regards to professional seaplane flying. So in Kakanok, we exchanged cargo for a couple passengers, and then we went to King Salmon, which is one of our main bases or where the lodges are. And there um, I hopped from the PC-12 into the to Havilland uh, DHC-3 Turbine Otter. Um, the first seaplane experience of the internship, definitely was excited to do it. Um, I did it with um, Shown Hero, Chris Desmond, I'm a mule alum. Uh, back here with Chris. Chris, you wanna tell us a little about yourself? Chris Desmond, been in Alaska since I graduated from Western in 2018. So going on my fifth summer up here and we're sitting in a Turbine Otter in King Salmon, Alaska and we're about to take a load of stuff to Brooks Falls. Yeah, we're excited. More videos to come guys. Nice to get two WMU Broncos in the cockpit. The seaplane, in my opinion, is the all-terrain vehicle of the sky. It was just epic scenery along the flight there. It was a nice 20-minute flight, nothing, nothing too crazy. So we did that, a couple trips back and forth, and then we went. I hopped back in the PC-12 and we flew back to Anchorage for the day. Going on to day four, um, still kind of the same things, moving the cargo with um, one of the pilots I was with was an Alaskan native, which is really cool to hear his story. Hey guys, it's day four out here in the bush. Uh, we're here in the PC-12, we're here with Art. Art, you wanna tell us a little bit about yourself? Hello, I'm Mark. I'm from Alaska. I've been flying up in Alaska since uh, 20, uh, 2005. Been with the company for a month. This company is pretty awesome. Awesome. Just dropped off some gear, waiting for the people to come up and pick up. Then we're going to go back to Anchorage. All right, see you guys. 
kind of a nice easy day just cargo going on to day five the operations that day were based out of lake hood seaplane base lake hood is the world's largest seaplane base it was one of the things that just makes this whole internship so incredible the amount of seaplane traffic on a day in and day out basis out of that airport is just incredible it's also a towered field too as um, lake hood has its own control tower which is really neat we're testing the dhc3 turbine otter going out taking off out of lake hood just going to the north, coming back, just making sure everything works. There's different types of floats you can put on an airplane. Straight floats are just, there's no landing gear that retracts up into the float. And this turbine otter just had straight floats. So we had to get that prepared to go into the lake. It's incredible the amount of power that you feel with that big gear turboprop engine up front. It's, it's quite, quite the aircraft. And then that was pretty much it for the weekend. Coming into the next week, getting into the turbine otter again, just looking at the operations there, getting everything ready to move out to the different lodges throughout Alaska. And it was really cool to see, especially last week on Friday, all the airplanes, the beaver, the otters, everyone just move out to wherever they're gonna be stationed for the season. We're back in the beaver, and now I'm in the back seat of the beaver with the chief pile up front, and then one of our um, seasonal pilots, we're moving out to King Salmon for the weekend. And, well, no, for the season, I should say. And I was there for a couple days, and living out in the bush, in the different types of environments that you see, you know, like on, you know, on television shows and stuff like that. And, you know, you open up your backyard and the backyard is trees. You have mountains in the background, lakes. It's, it's quite an incredible landscape. Um, so that was really nice living out there for a couple days. And um, also for Mount Iliamna shown here, it is definitely quite the landscape. You're going through um, the beaver here, not like the turbine otter. We can't go too high due to just the density altitude and just the terrain. The vertical development is just incredible going through the valleys through Mount Iliamna and looking up and seeing that active volcano slowly smoking. It was just, it's quite surreal. It was, cool. it was really, the type of landscape that we have here in the States isn't anything like what they have up in Alaska. So experiencing that type of flying and that's why learning about the different routes and valleys to take, hey, this one's safe today because the wind is coming out from here. We want to make sure we're on the east or west side depending on where the wind is coming from. And that's all really useful knowledge that I can bring down here to the states to my um, flying experiences currently. And like I said, I was throughout, when I was living out in the bush, I was a ramp agent for this, uh, for this next day, helping families, car, um, moving cargo into airplane. You know, at the beginning of the season, it's a lot of cargo, you know, getting stuff out there to the lodges. And then a lot of the families started coming out too. And on the banks of the Naknag River there in Katmai National Park, just loading hundreds of pounds of propane tanks. And then you could slowly, you could see the back of the airplane start slowly dipping down into the water. You need to be careful of that. So that's kind of a nice way to say, hey, I'm a little overweight for takeoff or I'm getting to the point where I can't take any more. So, you know, making sure we load the airplane correctly is a big thing. Flying the Turbine Otter from Brooks Lake to King Salmon on an empty leg was definitely one of the highlights of the trip. You know, flying that airplane um, on those empty legs and feeling how the airplane flies. It is a big airplane, but it's very docile. And I think that's a really good quality of a good seaplane. And with the pilot, I was with Chris Kobe, you know, telling me, Showing me some things with the turbine otter that would be different from other airplanes and taking that in that experience and you know that's definitely going to help me throughout my uh, career down the road looking out to all the windows and seeing how clear and teal the water is and looking up and seeing all the mountains and cap my national park that's something i'll never forget going through the next couple days here um, we have some um, plane spotting videos i had some free time at the end of each day because um, you can't land really see planes on water at night it's just not safe it's not lit up like a runway so going through just the anchorage town getting some local eats going out to the airport watching just some normal plane spotting av geek type material Material. And it's really cool to see because Anchorage is one of the world's busiest cargo airports. And it's where a lot of, you know, big 747s come in from all, all across the globe, you know, to fuel up, get some more cargo and go on to their next stop. And Anchorage is a big stopping point in the whole cargo route. Um, so that, that was really cool to see all that type of traffic. And in the PC-12, we're back here going from Anchorage to Bethel. Out in Bethel, it's very flat compared to Anchorage. You know, it's only an hour and a half, two hour flight, something like that. 
and the terrain completely changes. Did some cargo load there and then we came back to Anchorage and then we went from Anchorage, we needed to transport an airplane from Lake Hood to the hangar on, the, on Anchorage Airport. So you can go through the gate that they have at Anchorage. There's a gate separating between Anchorage and Lake Hood and there's a certain frequency go on there. You hit it a couple times and the taxiway gate opens up and you taxi through the gate to Lake Hood and back and forth. So that was really cool. We're kind of toward the back half of the internship, um, kind of toward the end here. And and now we're going to get into the management experience, working with Marty, their head dispatcher there, seeing how different it is booking a flight with Cat My Air and a charter company like Cat My Air. It's so different because you're cared for on a more personal level. Friday, June 3rd, this was my last day here. So took a picture outside the front headquarters there at the hangar. Hey guys, it's our last day in Alaska and I thought I'd uh, show you guys the man in charge here. Hey, uh, my name is Kellen Klosterman, uh, lifelong Alaskan. I'm the director of operations at uh, Cat My Air. Uh, in Anchorage and out in Bristol Bay. Um, we run a good size operation and we've had uh, Dylan with us the last couple weeks, kind of learning the ropes and uh, I think he's had a good time and had a lot of interesting experiences and we're happy to have had him up here and uh, we're looking forward to uh, to expanding our internship program. And ever since I came here on my first tour and saw the Super Cup on floats, I knew I wanted to have seaplane experience and I'm super excited for the next step. And like I said, it's not necessarily the destination that should be on your mind. It should be the journey. Enjoy your time building era. Enjoy whatever you're doing. At the end of your career, you want to be able to look back and be like, I enjoyed my career. WMU offers so many internships and this is one of those that is definitely not offered at other institutions. The connections that WMU has throughout the whole industry is the reason why this internship exists for WMU students. It's all about who you know in the aviation industry and this is no exception. No matter if you're flying seaplanes in Alaska or flight instructing here at Western Michigan University, it's all about what you make of it and make sure at the end of your career you feel like you've made the best out of your career. Boom. All right. Yeah, that was Woo. Awesome.